Okay, it can be said that this math magic effect was invented in 2012 by Steve Humble, a mathematician at Newcastle University. I'll provide a link in the description below that will take you to a published article that explains the underlying mathematics. We'll begin with a simplified version of this effect as a warm-up, and then we'll finish with the full-blown magical effect as envisioned by Steve Humble. Now, I should point out that for his effect, he used colored cards, red, yellow, and blue. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and just use colored magnets. Okay, so they work just as well. So as our warm-up little activity, uh, we're going to come down here at the bottom and we're going to create a little triangle from here, okay? And then for the full-blown effect, we're going to start way up here and come all the way down in the middle, okay? So um, off-camera view, there are uh, 30 to 40 red, yellow, and blue magnets, okay? And the choices that you're making here at the beginning are free choices. These are genuine uh, random choices or choices that you can make. Okay, so we're going to begin to build up the first layer, first level of this triangle. Okay, so you can put red, yellow, and blue in any combination and any quantity there. So maybe you'll want a blue first. That's fine. This, Like I said, this is all a free choice. Uh, maybe a yellow there. Maybe, um, let's see, why don't we have another blue, just to kind of mix things up. And then maybe a red right here. Okay. And now we're going to kind of go upward. Now, um, at this point, I, I should point out to you that I already know what color we will finish with at the very apex of this triangle. And I can tell you what it is right now. It's yellow. And so I could have had a written prediction that I would set aside and then we would continue doing this. Now, of course, because this is such a simple example, you can imagine somebody being able to kind of work through their mind a few steps ahead and, and get that answer, but that's not what I'm doing. It's, quote, more magical than that. Uh, but we will finish on a yellow. Okay, so how the rules work here is if you have two of different colors, so here we have a blue and a yellow, the third color goes right above them, kind of in between them, okay? Now, if you ever have a situation where two colors are the same, let's say these were both blue here, then you would put another blue one there, okay? So if these two are the same color, you put one of that same color. Um, if they're different colors, then you put the color that's not one of the two that you're looking at there. Okay, so like right here, once again, we have a yellow and a blue, so I would put a red, right? kind of at, at a 45 degree angle. Uh, now, what about here? So these are different colors. So I put the third color in right there, the yellow. Okay. And now the two red, oh, those are the same color. So that means I put a red right there. Okay. Uh, what about right here? Well, red and yellow, that means I need to put a blue right there. And then since we have red and blue, we need to put the third color right here, which is the yellow that I predicted we would get. Okay, very good. So uh, that was just warm up. That's a pretty simple one there. Okay, so let's do the monster one here. And so if you were here, uh, I would have you decide uh, what, you know, what magnets to put where. Now, when you go to do this, I just want to point out something kind of practical here. Now, you don't have to have magnets to do this. What you could do, in fact, I'm going to include a uh, write-up just like this, a little piece of paper. You'll have a link to it in the description. So if you just print this off, uh, what a person could do is just write R for red, Y for yellow, and B for blue. And then you could just like fill out that first row and then just follow these rules and you'll know ahead of time uh, what that final color is. Okay, now I haven't told you the secret yet, but I will. Okay, so just, just realize that you could actually just uh, write in R, Y, and B to kind of complete this. You don't really need um, these colored magnets. 
Okay, so maybe we'll go like that. Don't seem to have any neck, uh, same color next to each other. Uh, maybe we should remedy that. It doesn't actually matter. Like I said, it, it truly is just random. Okay, so we'll put that one right there. Okay, so at this moment, I know exactly what the ending color will be. So when we come all the way down here, this final magnet will have to be yellow. It'll have to be yellow. Okay, this one here. Okay. Um, and I may have just used some misdirection on you, so be warned as far as where I was pointing. Okay, so what's the rule here? Uh, so these are different, so we need to put the third one right there. Uh, these are different. It's the same thing, a yellow one there. Uh, both red, so you just put a third red. Um, here, a red and a blue. Well, we put a yellow. Uh, this time, it's a blue and a yellow, so we would put a red right there. Um, here, yellow and red, a blue would go below. Um, same thing here, it's a red and a yellow. Blue goes below. I uh, hear, boy, we're getting a bunch of blues in a row. That's kind of interesting. And then a yellow would go here because there's a red and blue above, right? Okay, what about here? Well, there's two yellows, right? So we put a yellow right below. Um, what about here? Yellow and red. Well, it's going to be a blue, right? It's going to be the remaining third color. Here, a red and a yellow. Mm, blue again. <laughs> This thing's going to have a lot of blues. Um, yellow and red. Oh, blue again. I had a kind of an interesting initial state, I guess. Uh, red and a blue, of course, would uh, mean we put a yellow right there. Oh, two blues. That means we put a blue down. Uh, two blues here. We put a third blue down. And then right here, blue and yellow. Mm, we put the remaining color, which is a red. Um, over here, we would put a red below it, right, because it's yellow and blue. A couple of blues, so that's a repeat, so we'd put a blue there, and we would put a blue here as well, right? Um, see, blue, yellow, put a red. A yellow, blue, uh, put a red again. A couple of blues, so that's easy, you just put another blue down. Uh, blue and red, so a yellow would go right there. Uh, here, same thing. Uh, yellow would go right here. A uh, couple of whoops, couple of blues. Well, we know what to do there. It's another blue. A uh, blue and a red. Well, that means a yellow goes right there. A couple of reds. Well, that means a third red needs to be put down. And a red and a blue. Well, that means we need the remaining color put there. Yellow. A blue and a yellow. Well, we need a red. Okay, to finish that level. Um, here, same thing. Yellow and blue means a red goes there. Uh, blue and yellow, same thing. <laughs> red goes there. Um, here, yellow and uh, blue, uh, sorry, yellow and red means we put a blue there. Uh, same thing again. Red and yellow uh, is a blue. I apologize if at any point I said the wrong colors for the magnet, so I may have. <laughs> Just follow what I'm actually doing. Okay, so yellow and a red is a blue. Okay, so this is interesting. That will be a red, and then this one will be a yellow, of course, because we have a red and blue above, and then we're going to have a couple of blues, right, because of the blues up above. Uh, here, another blue. That's interesting. Um, here, we get a red, Right, it's the remaining color. Oh, here we get another another blue. Um, here we get a yellow. Yeah, that's kind of fun. And then here we would get a yellow as well. And then here we would get a yellow, which is what I predicted would happen. And it did. Okay, so that is what I've, well, I think Steve Humble maybe was the first one to call it the magical triangle. And the mathematics behind this is um, not trivial. I'll just uh, let you know that. Um, so if you want to take a look at the article that I've linked in the description, uh, they do a very good job kind of going through uh, the mathematics for this. And it's not as if every triangle of this sort is going to work. In fact, for three colors, which is what we have, the number of positions for the first row here 
has to be a power of three plus one. So this is an effect you can do with a prime numbers, uh, but for prime number three, it's powers of three plus one. Of course, we did one down here and it had four. Well, four is equal to three to the first plus one, right? So that's, so four is a power of three plus one. And of course, 10 is three squared plus one. And those are conditions that actually have to be met for you to be able to predict the outcome. Okay, so finally, how is it that you predict the outcome? I haven't told you yet. All you need to do is once the first level or first row is put out, you just need to look at the colors of the end, either cards or here it's magnets. Okay, so by our rules, what would go below a red on the left and a blue on the right? In fact, the left and right wouldn't matter, but well, we would put a yellow, right? So if, if, if we, in this little game, if we had a situation like this and we're wondering what goes there, well, we know it's a yellow. Right? And so anyway, that is actually the case. So just by knowing the colors of the first and last kind of element on this first row, you can predict with certainty what the color of the final magnet here or co color card or whatever you use to represent these uh, three colors. So anyway, that is the punchline for how it is I was able to predict the yellow would be the final one. And if you remember in the example I started with, with four, I had a red and a blue. So I knew that the apex of the triangle would have to be a yellow magnet, given the constraints of these rules. So thank you for watching. And I encourage you to take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.